Bienvenidos a Merida, Yucatan. My name is Eric, and today I want to talk to you about the capital of the state of Yucatan and why it's become such a popular expat destination. It's a destination for seniors, for retirees, even younger people. It's a very family-oriented type of place, and it was ranked the second safest city in the Western Hemisphere after Quebec City, Canada. That's according to CEO World Magazine, Com. You can check it out if you want to look at the safest cities in the world. Uh, worldwide, it came in at number 21. The first city in the United States to make the list was Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, I personally, I don't hold, uh, I, I kind of hold lists with a grain of salt, meaning you never know exactly what their intentions are or what their ranking systems are, uh, population, uh, a lot of times crimes happen that just go unreported. So there's a lot of things that go into it. So I'm not really a big list guy. You ask 100 people what's the safest place, you'll probably get 100 different answers. So, But still, I can vouch for the fact that it is safe here. I live here, and there's very little crime. I mean, I don't hear of any murders or anything like that happening in, uh, in the Yucatan. And of course, I'm sure they happen, but I'm just saying. Can, in comparison with other places in the world, yes, it's a very, very safe place to live. So it wouldn't surprise me that it is number two in the Western Hemisphere, and yes, in Mexico. So I know what you're thinking, a lot of you, you're thinking Narcos, El Chapo, okay, that doesn't happen in the Yucatan, it just doesn't. So there may be other petty crime and theft and, and stuff like that I have not been a victim of, but uh, anyway, I want to discuss the pros of why people are choosing to live in Merida and what it has to offer. So the first thing is going to be the climate. I want to discuss that first because if you're not, if you don't enjoy a hot climate, you will not like Merida. I mean, it's extremely, extremely hot. Now it does cool down maybe a little bit, November, December, a little bit of January perhaps, similar to, you know, the United States maybe, but it's hot. I mean, it reached 105 degrees two days ago, 105 degrees. So if that bothers you and you're not, you know, you don't want to live off of air conditioning, then it might not be for you. That for me is really the only downside I could see for uh, living in Merida, but of course everybody's different. So I'll go over some of the things that I really like about living here and enjoy and share them with you. The other thing that I like about living here, of course, is the food, which is, I like Mexican food in general, but the Yucatan, in particular, has its own style of food. Just like everywhere in Mexico, all the regions, they have their specialties. For example, there's no burritos here. There's none. I've looked around. I, haven't, I mean, maybe there's a place that sells burritos. If you live in Merida and you, you know where there are burritos, let me know. It is actually something I enjoy and I miss. But they have a lot of other food uh, based on the Mayan uh, diet and mostly made of corn is the principal you know, staple of the Mexican diet. And so one of them is called cochinita pibil, that's one of my favorites, sopa de lima, which is a lime-based soup, usually with chicken and some tortilla strips in it. Uh, panuchos are delicious. Uh, salbutes, which is very similar to panuchos. And chilequiles, which is all over Mexico, but it's also eaten quite often here in, uh, in Merida. So the food is just excellent. No matter where you go, you're not going to miss out on any great Mexican food, assuming you like Mexican food. If you don't like Mexican food, you're not going to like it. So the, let's get into that. For the people that want something different, and even me, I get tired of eating tacos. Not that, not that much. I, I, I like them a lot, and I love the tacos al pastor. But occasionally, I want something different. I want a cheeseburger. I want wings or something like that. There's actually two restaurants here. Uh, well, it's actually, it's one chain with two locations called Boston's, and it's a Canadian-owned company, and they offer wings and, uh, you know, cheeseburgers and fries and, you know, that type of thing you might be used to or perhaps you have a little craving for every once in a while. As far as the other chain restaurants that you might enjoy, they got the P.F. Chang's, uh, TGI Fridays, although one of them closed recently or moved. Uh, Chili's, and they have most all of the fast food joints too. I'm not going to name them, but all the fast food, you know, hamburger stuff, you will find that here. You won't miss it. 
Oh, and by the way, Boston's that place I was mentioning, they offer, they're known for their pizza, really. So good place to get pizza. And so it's not just Mexican food. You can find any type of food, sushi. There's an excellent sushi place called Miyabi. And uh, I highly recommend that if you like sushi. So the other thing good about Merida is the fact that it has its own airport and you don't have to drive all the way three hours or four hours if you take the bus to go to Cancun to get to the United States or to anywhere for that matter. It has direct flights from Miami to Merida or from, <laughs> from Merida to Miami, obviously, whatever, back and forth. It also has direct flights to Houston. Now, with the current pandemic going on, I don't know if those flights will continue. Personally, when I took those flights, the plane wasn't packed at that time, so I'm not sure if it'll resume. You may have to go to Cancun to travel. You'd have to go to Cancun anyway if you planned on going to a large international destination, such as anywhere in Europe or Asia or anything like that. So not only does it have flights, of course, back to the States, but also within Mexico. You want to go to Mexico City, it's so easy to go to the Merida Airport. It's a small airport. I mean, you just get in, you get on, and you're out. You know, it's, it's simple. So that's one thing I like about living uh, in Merida. The other thing is the natural beauty of the Yucatan. There is a city which is about two hours away, and it's, it's interesting because it's literally, I mean, almost exactly smack dab in the middle between Cancun and Merida, and it's called Valladolid. And it's an amazing city. It's got a lot of cenotes, which if you're not sure, the cenotes are swimming pools, basically, uh, nature's version of swimming pools that were created from an asteroid that hit near the Yucatan Peninsula six billion years ago. And I mean, some of these cenotes are absolutely beautiful. There's one in particular that I visited and I remember, and it was called Suitun, and it's got a man-made platform that goes out to the center of the cenote, and then the cave has a hole in it where the light shines through, of course, depending upon the time of the day, but it's a very Instagrammable, place to go, and if you search Suitun, which is S-U-I-T-U-N, Cenote, you'll find it on the internet, and you'll see all kinds of pictures, and these people standing on the pedestal with the light shining on them. It's just, it's perfect. It really is. Not only that, they have the vaqueria, which is a traditional Mayan dance, which is incredible to watch, and I was fortunate enough to spend some time in the park, the Central Park, where they actually have a cenote in the park, like in the central, the center of Valladolid. So I got a chance to visit several cenotes and the vaqueria, which is a great dance, traditional dance, Mayan culture, the women wear these beautiful dresses that are embroidered with uh, you know, flowers and stuff like that, and the men are all dressed in white, and they wear what are like huaraches type of thing, which are like sandals almost. And there's actually, a, technically, it's, it's not huaraches, it's another word, I'd have to look it up. But it's very similar to sandals. And they have this typical dress. And so Valladolid is only about two hours away. And then near Valladolid, if you go uh, north, you're gonna hit uh, Rio Lagartos, which is known for its pink water. I mean, it's really, it really is pink. It's not Photoshop. If you've seen it on Instagram or anything else, or, or just online, it's real. Of course, they can make it more pink, you know, in, in post-production or whatever, but it really is pink water, and that's because of the microorganisms and the salt that is in the water. It turns the water pink. So there's tons of photos if you look up Rio Lagartos in uh, Yucatan. So Chichen Itza is also extremely close to Valladolid. I think it's 40 minutes, 45 minutes away. It's not far at all. So Chichen Itza, of course, is the famous Mayan temple. Um, thousands and thousands of visitors go there every year. Of course, that's not happening right now, but it will resume, it will resume. And so the general nature of the Yucatan is, is very interesting in my opinion. There are no mountains, it's flat, but there's a lot of, the ocean is only 20 minutes away from where I am. I live in North Merida, which is where most expats live if they don't live in the center. A lot of expats like to buy these beautiful historic colonial mansions, restore them, 
and live downtown in the center, which is beautiful. The downtown area has a street that, that starts downtown and it runs up to the north. It's called Paseo de Montejo. And it is probably the cleanest avenue. It's definitely one of the cleanest avenue or boulevards I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's spotless and they really take care of it and take pride in this street. In any event, I live more to the north where a lot of people also live and I live closer to certain conveniences like Costco, Home Depot, those types of things. I understand that some people don't want that when they move away and they go to another country, they wanna kinda of leave America behind and they don't want any American influence and all that kind of stuff. And I understand it, I really do. But I do like convenience, that's just me. I think it's smart to shop at a place like Costco. But again, if you don't like that type of thing, then you might wanna look you might want to look for like a little pueblo where, you know, you just buy local stuff. I buy local as well, but for some things, certain things just make sense for me to buy in bulk. And uh, especially if you're trying to live the frugal lifestyle. So that's another great thing about living in Merida. They're opening now a senior housing facility in Merida close to La Isla, which is a beautiful shopping center. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous mall. And I'm not a mall person. I don't like malls even in the United States, I didn't, well, when I was a kid maybe, when I was 18, of course, all kids like malls, because that's when you meet the, meet the chicks, right? <laughs> but uh, this mall is beautiful. It's super modern, but it has like a, just a warm, welcoming feel to it, the, the food court, everything, it's very nice. And so near the Isla, there is a housing development, and there's also going to be a senior housing development, which I think is wonderful because a lot of people, especially seniors, they simply can't live on $1,500 a month, which is pretty much the average social security check. So if that's all you have, if your only passive income is your social security check for $1,500, it's gonna be tough going living in the United States. That's just the truth, it's a major problem. Yahoo Finance put out a report that stated that 64%, 64% of Americans will retire broke. I mean, that's awful. That's terrible. And I think it's more, I think it's really about financial management. It's not that they didn't make enough money in their careers. It's just that they didn't handle their finances well. They didn't manage it well. They didn't invest their money. They had it sitting perhaps in a bank account. And so you get to that age when you're, you know, 65, 66, the last thing you probably want to do is get up and work, right? But that's what the United States is based on. It's work, work, work till you die. And unfortunately, a lot of people, that is reality. They can't live without working when they get to that age. So another thing about Merida that I really enjoy is the fact that it, it's, it's a city of a million people. It's the capital, like I said, of the state of Yucatan, but it's well spread out. Okay, there's not, I, I mean, some people like that, some people don't like that, some people want a huge city with skyscrapers, which is a whole nother subject because I had this feeling that skyscrapers and all these huge buildings in the cities are gonna be empty, and I have a feeling they may turn them into residences. I don't know, but I think a lot of employers have realized that they don't really need these expensive offices in downtown major cities. It'll be interesting to find out. In any event, Merida is very suburban, it feels suburban. Uh, you do need a car. You know, if you're gonna live here, you need a car to get around and drive around. So some people like that, some people don't. Some people want the, some people want the city feel, especially younger people, they like that, and I understand that. I like it too. I like it for a while. I like it for a weekend or a couple weeks, but if you wanna live in a, like a family-oriented type place, uh, married is definitely a good choice. And so that's about it. I'm looking at a little list that I had written down here, and uh, that's it. That's all I can say about Merida. It's a great choice. Oh, one, I will give you one little con that I don't think it would prevent you from moving here, but because of the heat and how hot it is, you're gonna have a high electric bill. That's just the fact of living here. Especially if you're like me and you like it kind of cool, your air conditioner will be running almost 24 seven. And so your electric bill, of course, it depends on how much money you make, how rich are you? you know, Expensive is relative, right? But I spend quite a bit on uh, the light bill every two months. They charge you every two months. 
So every two months I pay the light bill. I know it's going to be kind of expensive. I don't care. I'm not going to live with a fan. I can't just live with a fan when it's 105 degrees outside. So it's not 105 today, but I'm just letting you know these are the temperatures you can come to expect in Merida. If you're curious, just Google average temperature Merida. It's not quite as cool as like Cancun and Playa del Carmen, which get the, the breeze. There is a beach here. It's only 20 minutes from where I live. It's called Progreso. It's not the most beautiful beach in the world. Uh, it does, interestingly enough, have the longest pier in the world, which is six miles long, roughly. And I actually had my car shipped there. So I drove from Progreso to Merida. That's how I got here. And yes, you can bring your car on a ship. But in any event, it's a nice little beach town, but the waters are not that turquoise blue like you might used to be seeing in uh, Cancun or Playa del Carmen or Tulum or something like that. So that's it. It's a great place where it's located because if you want to go to Cancun or Tulum or Valladolid or any of these places, you can in a car. It's easy. You can spend the weekend there and come back. So I think it's relatively uh, in a good location. That's it for now. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care. So anyway, I'm standing in front of La Isla Merida. It's a beautiful shopping mall. It's closed right now. You can't get in. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how wonderful it is. And uh, when it reopens, it should be a great place.